In modern football, there are many interesting teams around the world, but even among them, St. Pauli stands out both on the pitch and beyond. Their history begins in Hamburg, Germany's most multicultural city and its port center. There are two groups of people who live there. The first includes nonconformists, bikers, and rockers. The second comprises local intellectuals and the upper class. The paradox is that football has become the unifying force among these diverse groups of Hamburg society, specifically through St. Pauli. Additionally, the club has two founding dates. The first is in 1910, when and they were part of a gymnastics club, but they became an independent team only in 1925. It's worth noting that until the end of World War II, the club had no significant successes, and the team itself was below average by German standards at the time. After the war, St. Pauli competed in the local city league, but constantly were overshadowed by their rivals, Hamburg SV, until they became champions in 1947. Following this, the Hamburg Pirates did not achieve significant success until 1964, when the Bundesliga was established. However, St. Pauli Pauli did not hesitate to aim for the elite of German football, starting their journey from regional leagues. In 1974, the decision was made to organize the second Bundesliga, and St. Pauli was invited, giving them the opportunity to prove themselves. The club was not taken seriously across Germany or within the country's football association, but they surprised everyone by establishing themselves in the second Bundesliga and achieving promotion to the Bundesliga within two seasons. Unfortunately, their debut season in 1977-78 ended in failure. They finished in last place and returned to the second Bundesliga. The club then began experiencing financial problems that brought them to the brink of disappearing, leading to their relegation to the Oberliga. For those who don't know, this is the fifth tier league in the German football system. However, despite this sharp drop in class, the club's fans did not abandon them in their time of need and continued to support them both at the stadium and beyond. In 1984, the Pirates returned to the second Bundesliga. At that time, St. Pauli transitioned from a standard traditional club into a cult club. St. Pauli started to attract social activists, punks, and incorporate left-leaning ideas, mixing them with the party atmosphere of the club's matches. But how did the Jolly Roger become part of the club's identity? Legends say that a singer from a Hamburg punk band nailed a Jolly Roger flag to a broomstick and brought it to the Millerntor Stadion, the home ground of St. Pauli. The original flag featured a skull with a pirate eye patch. Over time, other fans began to bring similar flags to matches, which became part of the club's identity. In 1991, one of their fans, Sven Brooks, visited the United Kingdom and was impressed with Celtic's supporters. He recommended that everyone in St. Pauli's camp attend their matches. Over time, the clubs developed a special bond, as the fundamental principles of the German club are strongly reflected in Celtic. Tolerance and respect in mutual human relationships are important pillars of St. Pauli's philosophy, and the history of the Scottish club aligns well with these principles. Even to this day, you can find Jolly Roger and St. Pauli flags at Celtic Stadium as a sign of their friendship. Now back to the club's rise. In 1988, they managed to return to the Bundesliga, which delighted the club's numerous fan base. In their first season back, they secured their position in the Bundesliga, finishing in 10th place. The following two seasons were not as successful, and St. Pauli returned to the second Bundesliga. The club again faced financial problems, but this did not prevent them from returning to the Bundesliga in 2001. However, this return was disastrous, and the club was relegated again after winning only four matches. One of these victories remains the most memorable, as they managed to defeat the reigning Champions League winners by Bayern Munich at home in a thrilling match with a score of 2-1, but this was the only pleasant memory of that season. In 2002, Corny Littman became the club's president. He had a controversial reputation at the time, being an entrepreneur, entertainer, and owner of the Schmidt Theater in Hamburg. Additionally, he was openly gay and a leader of the European LGBT movement. He immediately took action and began restructuring the club. He fired 20 employees and the commercial director, set a salary cap for players, and took the former vice president to court for embezzling the club's funds. The club was once again on the brink of bankruptcy in 2003, so they organized the Save St. Pauli campaign. Fans sold t-shirts with the club's logo and the word Savior, which helped them raise 1 million euros for the club. Additionally, many bars in Hamburg sold beer, with 50 cents from each purchase going to the club. Furthermore, Bayern Munich decided to help by playing a charity match, during which Uli Honus wore a Savior t-shirt. Within two weeks, St. Pauli managed to raise 2 million euros, plus they sold all of their best players. The club was able to pay off its debts and obtain a license. With a new squad and 12,000 season tickets sold for the 2003-04 season, which was the best result in regional league history, the club's performance was terrible. However, in 2006, former St. Pauli player Holger Stanislawski took over as manager. He was well aware of the club's situation and eventually managed to lead the team back to the second Bundesliga. Additionally, the club's management worked on improving the club's condition, and in 2006 they began rebuilding their stadium, increasing its capacity to 20 20 
27,000 seats. Effective work both on and off the field led to the Pirates' return to the Bundesliga in 2010. Unfortunately for the fans, the man who had essentially pulled St. Pauli from the abyss, Corny Littman, announced his resignation. As per tradition, St. Pauli finished last in the new season, but everyone remained optimistic about the club's future, embarking on a new journey to return to the Bundesliga. A new chapter in the history of St. Pauli began in 2022. After a disastrous start under the management of Tim Schultz, the team found itself in the relegation zone, leading to his sacking. His assistant, Fabian Herzler, who was only 29 years old at the time, took over. He pleasantly surprised everyone by restructuring the team's play and improving the internal atmosphere. Gradually, the club gained momentum, and by the end of the season, they won the second Bundesliga, playing a dynamic and balanced style of football with quick transitions to attack and overloaded flanks. Despite the average skill level of St. Pauli's players, they perfectly fit Fabian's style. This did not go unnoticed, and after Roberto De Zerbi left Brighton, the Seagulls' management decided to sign the promising manager to lead them into the new Premier League season. Alexander Blessing became the new head coach of St. Pauli, and it is still unclear how the team will perform in the Bundesliga. However, we can surely expect an incredible atmosphere at their stadium during matches. If you decide to attend one of their games, you might even have the chance to meet the club's board members who, like many of the fans, support their team from the standing terraces, a rarity in modern football. In my opinion, clubs like St. Pauli are crucial for football, with their unique history and philosophy that resonates not only within the sport but also beyond its boundaries. Despite having few trophies and not boasting super famous footballers who currently or previously played for the Pirates, they have left a significant mark on European football simply through the aura of being an unusual club that everyone knows about, much like Athletic Bilbao, Celtic, Livorno, Partizan, and many others. Clubs like St. Pauli are rare in football, and their unique path and history command respect. I forgot to mention one interesting fact. St. Pauli and Celtic fans have such a strong bond that in addition to visiting each other's stadiums, they also organize parties. Every autumn, 400 Celtic fans come to Hamburg to have a great time with St. Pauli supporters. If you're a regular football fan or a Celtic supporter who didn't know about this, you might consider making a trip to Hamburg to join the party. You definitely won't forget it. What do you think about St. Pauli, and would you like to attend their matches in person? Share your thoughts in the comments. It will be interesting to read them. In the meantime, thanks for watching and highly recommend you to check out some of my other videos such as football clubs friendships and how SC Freiburg became the Bundesliga's phenomenon as you can see on your screen. My name is Ole, love this game, I'll see you next time.